I want to tell you two stories, and uh, unfortunately, I have to walk around because I see these people sitting behind the pillars. And I just want to get the feel of how many people in the room are process engineers. And uh, on the manufacturing side? Okay, so I'll keep it fairly low key so that we can talk to each other a, a little bit later. But I'm tell you, I want to tell you two stories, the one on the manufacturing side, and then uh, our tough path through mineral processing side with our pieces of equipment that we install on the mines. In 1959, the first robots were installed on uh, manufacturing machines. I think South Africa missed out on, on that for many years. Multitech itself, we started in 1987, and we installed the first robot on a ceramic uh, producing press for our for wear lining of, of, of our processing equipment and for armor plating at those days for the uh, for the defense force. And I can I would like to ask you lot, how long do you guess that robot operated on that press? Is that a guess there? It was two hours. <laughs> the reason for that is we underestimated the, the thinking of our workers in the factories. To give you an idea, we've got 11 factories uh, in six companies and just over 1,600 workers in the factory. Those workers in that, around that press saw that robot as something that's going to take all their work away for the next 30 years. And slowly but surely, that German robot developed all kinds of funny problems. <laughs> and we could never get it running again. So last year, the whole hype started with four Industrial Revolution. And we decided, not that mistake again. And we realized that it probably have to start with the information that you share at senior levels and in management levels and supervisory levels right through your factories that will take us somewhere in terms of efficiency improvement with 4IR technology. So we started with implementing a first a financial system and then a procurement uh, uh, system through, uh, throughout all our companies. And the next step now is to use an on-base type database system so that we can link all our production uh, machines into the system. Now, there is a technology that we would still require because what we believe should be possible. A customer places an order with us. Uh, somebody looks at that order and they see in what company it should be and uh, what machines, what product it is, and um, make sure that it's correct and upload it in the system. Once it's in the right company, the, the uh, a, a, a order book uh, uh, analysis, uh, analysis has taken place so that we know how long that will take to, to produce and what machines should produce. And that works order then goes directly to the machine. And there it stops until the operator of the machine reads that and then schedule that machine to produce that specific product. That way, we need to upskill our, our, our workers, of course, to be computer literate, number one. Number two, to maintain those machines. And number three, to do the housekeeping around those machines. Before we even think of automating the machine. In one of our factories, we've now bought uh, seven brand new machines, uh, which is semi-automatic. And we look at robotizing it. It is hugely expensive. Uh, I think South Africa will probably miss a portion of that robotic um, machines in our factories because of the price. Unless there's a will in our government or in associations like where we're sitting now with the CSIR, where some of the manufacturing facilities can probably rent a robot 
and it's in a central base and all of all of our manufacturing facilities then <coughs> use that specific robots in onto machines then that company will be able to afford it now let's walk over to the next problem and that is so we produce these metallurgical processing equipment wonderful stuff we've got two broad ranges of, of, of equipment. The one is on the, on the screening side, which is a polyurethane polymer. And the other side is very expensive uh, cast iron cyclones with a ceramic lining. We first thought, oh well, the plastics will be the most, the easiest to, to, to capture. And we, and we started putting in accelerometers into our polyurethane panels. Now, all of us have got the accelerometer into our cell phones, and that tells you the direction that you're walking in or the level or whatever. We installed those things on a, on a diamond mine. It produced so much data that we couldn't upload it onto our computers. We tried to print it. We tried to analyze it. We could make nothing out of all those data that was produced by those accelerometers. And we thought we are barking up the wrong tree. We then switched over to the cyclone because at least it's solid. It's a cast steel thing. And we put two accelerometers on that because our customers are telling us that for this piece of kit that's uh, about my size, at a price of 450,000 Rand, of which 200,000 rand is the ceramics, and they mine all kinds of things underground and on the surface, of which most damaging for ceramics are the steel teeth on the cutting machines. If that goes through that cyclone, it breaks up those uh, ceramics in one shot and everything is gone. So we uh, put those uh, ac accelerometers on the cyclone and we started running it. Same story. Lots of data. We then thought, uh, well, uh, we've heard about artificial intelligence. And we started Googling where can we find artificial intelligence operators in South Africa. Couldn't find. Found a company in San Francisco. They uh, are charging us for the, for the, for the uh, working of the data. And then they give us back trends. And we decide then, okay, then we will find somebody from South Africa that will look at those trends and make it for us into an engineering formula so that we can do a bit of machine learning with, these, with this data. And guess what? It worked like a dream. We could immediately see all kinds of things on that cyclone. We could see if it's blocked. We could see if the density changes in the cyclone. We could see if the underflow is not correct. But most of all, we wanted to check the, the, the sensitivity for um, steel going through the cyclone. And we thought we would use nuts, steel nuts from bolts. That not go through that cyclone in less than uh, three seconds. So, of course, the data, it will pick it up, but we can't see it. So to test that, we had to tie a nut to a, to a fishing line and drop it into the cyclone so that it can run in the cyclone and we could, so we could pick up something. And from that, we got the machine learning into the artificial intelligence. And now we can pick up anything from a small nut to a big piece of steel in that cyclone within a second. We're working back, backwards now to get to the point where if we cannot pick up that steel when it's in the pipe going to the cyclone before it damages the, the, the ceramics. But that is some time to go because we pick up resistance with our customers. Our customers on the mines would not allow a supplier of equipment like us to get into their computer system and take data out of that so that we can manage the, the pieces of equipment for them. So we have to now develop a chip with the instrumentation in that we can put on the cyclone that can feed the, the final data or the flag of something is wrong 
to their computers and then they are willing to work with us. So now we've got this little uh, piece of instrumentation that's about this size and we're putting a, up a, a thing that's about the size of a cigarette box with all the electronics in it that has now got all the formulas in so that we can flag these dangerous situations on a cycler. Our next step will be back to our polyurethane panels and to see if we can pick up anything there. But I think we'll have to get to a more sophisticated AI operator. And I think that's where our universities, Kubulani, and uh, here he's sitting, and all the other universities around South Africa should look at these artificial intelligence um, type engineers that can work with that and develop um, formulations for us and machine learning in, in, of, on these data. I think uh, I've read already that some of the universities are talking about megatronic engineers. I've never heard of a thing like that, but that sounds to me the right way. And I want to end at, the, at that point, Jan, uh, Jan for you. Thank you. Okay.